Today I want to take you through the process of entering a show. So first of all, let's talk about what shows you can enter and what shows are worth it. This is the website for the Indiana State Fair. You're free to enter, I think I've said this before, any of the State Fair shows, but it comes down to what's worth it to you. And we talked about the premiums a little bit last time. Where exactly is the Indiana State Fair? Okay, there's the dates, August 2nd through 18th. And we're not sure yet which days we have to be there. It's in Indianapolis, so that's a hard two-hour drive each way, which means I've got to get a hotel room up there for the entire duration of the show. Am I going to make that back? I really like the way that this website has their book set up so that you can read it as a PDF. Animal health requirements, let's touch on that for just a second. So you can read all the same information, certificate of veterinary inspection, and of course we also have to have our scrapey tags. So here in Kentucky, they're looking for ORF. There, they're looking for ringworm. All sheep must be presented slick shorn for inspection. That's going to be a problem, right? Because our breed standards for all other breed wool, unless you're south down, you're supposed to be shown with some kind of wool. So Indiana wants some slick sheared, and then a week later, we're supposed to show in the fleece in Kentucky. That's not going to happen. Okay, down here it shows you how much the exhibitor tickets are, $8 a piece. You're going to pay a department fee, which includes, oh, that's nice. It includes your exhibitor tickets and unloading pass. And I'll show you the pass as well. So they have a campground on site, which is nice, $40 a day. All right, so that's cheaper than a hotel, but still we have to add that into the cost. And the entry fee definitely goes up the longer you wait. So you've got a per head entry fee plus a department fee, which does include your tickets, but still. Arrival and release. You can't just take your animals off the premises when you're ready to go, or like say you got in a huff, which would be poor sportsmanship. You have to wait and be released by the superintendent of the show. Okay, so here's our schedule. And you can see up here at the top that the sheep, even though they're not showing until later, they're being accepted on July 31st and August 1st. Well, if I have to tend to my sheep in Indiana and they have to be there starting on August 1st, that's two weeks of hotel or campground stay because I live too far to just jet back and forth and make sure they've got enough water. We don't even show until August 13th. So 13 days at 40 bucks a pop, plus your food, plus the gas to get there and back. Even though Indiana is a close state, this is not a worthwhile show for us. And then you look down here and at the premiums, sliding scale, so I guess their premiums depend on how many people enter. And then they split the pot, essentially. And see, in my case, in Kentucky, I'll be showing in all other breeds wool. And I have two yearling ewes, so I could show a pair of ewes, but they're not the same breed, so I'm not sure that I can do that. Here's their lead class description. I'm not eligible for the lead class because it's 8 to 21 years of age. Again, you're using a ewe of any breed, trained to show at halter. She doesn't have to be slick shorn. She can be fitted out. Indiana has enough Shetland producers that participate at show that they can have their own division. So if I were to take my Shetlands, that's where I would be showing. I know that it's heavy competition. They don't come to Kentucky except for North American. And again, look at how much I'm going to win. So it's simply not worth it for me. Now, if you're selling 20, 30 lambs a year and they are the top quality for their breed and you need a ribbon to feel good about yourself or in order to promote your sheep, then by all means, that's an investment and, you know, do it and write it off. If you've got kids and this is their experience that you're giving them, by all means, do it. And the rules are a little bit different because, you know, hopefully they're participating in FFA or 4-H. For me, as an adult, in an open show, which is what this series is primarily aimed towards, 
there's no financial benefit for me taking two weeks off, driving to Indianapolis, camping for two weeks. So now let's look at the Kentucky page. And I'm not saying this is better. Again, it depends on your situation. It depends on your geographic location. So here's the printable PDF. It might be a fillable PDF, but this is if you're gonna print and mail. It shows you the deadline for entry. And again, you can enter with late fees after this, but $7 ahead and how much you owe them. And then if you need exhibitor tickets. Now you do need a ticket every time you go to the fairgrounds. If you leave the fairgrounds and come back, you're gonna need a ticket to get in while the gates are open. So make sure that you get enough to cover going and feeding your animals and coming and going as you please. This is the website to enter the Kentucky State Fair. I really, really like it. So you're gonna register using all of your information. And a lot of this website I'm not gonna be able to show you precisely because there's personal information, financial information. There will be parts of this process that, that I don't show. Okay, so entries. And they do need all your information just so that they can pay you when you win. We're gonna choose all other breeds wool type. And here's where you're gonna enter your sheep. So I've got three entries this year. And this is where your registration papers come in because you need to enter the information for the animal exactly as it is on the paperwork. So on her paperwork, Tilda is Ballyhoo Farm number 22 Tilda. I'm gonna look at her paperwork again, make sure that everything is exactly correct. Now her registration ID number is the number from the breed reg registry, whereas the 22 is my tag number. And the Gotland, you'll see the information is slightly different from the Shetland information. So from this moment of committal onward, you need to pretty much just have all your registration papers and all your paperwork in one envelope or folder until you come home from show. Okay, so Tilda's registered for show. So we'll do our second sheep. Open sheep, wool type. And let's do Lagavulin this time. So he'll be a yearling ram class. Ooh, class 001, that means he's first in the ring. Again, entering the name exactly as it appears on his registration paperwork. And I'm only bringing three sheep. I don't need a tax stall for every single one of them. I've already said that I want one with Tilda. That will do for all three of my sheep. And I'll just use one stall for all three of them. That's what I did last year. It worked really well. Most people will separate their ewes and rams. Uh, Shetlands don't breed out of season, and so I can get away with, with doing it that way. Okay, so they want me to add exhibitor tickets now. I clicked something. So here you can see my two entries and all their information, and then the book of exhibitor tickets. I highly recommend also getting exhibitor tickets for friends and family. If they want to pay you back for them, that's great. But it's a cheaper price. It includes parking. I know in Kentucky they do limit the number of books you can have per entry. Now, I also entered yarn. So I can get more books of tickets because I'm entered in multiple places. But just get the ones you need. Save some for other people. Don't need an extra tax stall for Dahlia. We'll just use the one for everybody. 
Okay, let's go down and look through the premium book and find our class. There it is, all other breeds wool type. So we can see the class list and see how much I'm gonna win. If I win, hopefully we win. Seven bucks and I get, you know, 15 or 30. Okay, now I could enter flock because I have one yearling ram and two yearling ewes. And I do have lambs, but then I've got to pay for health certificates. There are two extra sheep. I've got a halter train. My lambs aren't very big or impressive. So I'm probably just going to stick with a pair of yearling ewes because I know that some of these people are trotting in merinos and the lambs are four times the size of mine. So let's see, we can enter a pair of yearling ewes. We know they're female, but then I'm not sure how to fill this stuff out at the bottom. So that would be where I would email or call the fair and ask for further clarification. So there's my entries. And now I'm ready to pay. So I'm gonna choose my payment method and then fill that out. And I'm not going to show you that part of the process. When you enter, you'll get an email, assuming that you've done it online. I'm sure you just get a letter if you do it via paper. So you can make sure that it's right. If you need to make any changes, you can do that also through the online program. Then in the mail, at about the beginning of August, you're going to get some paperwork. It's going to be a little manila envelope and it will have a letter in it that says thank you for your entry and it's going to include your parking pass and stuff as well so make sure that you again keep your registration papers handy keep that envelope last year's it said your entries have been received enclosed as a parking permit for the livestock lot and it tells you which lot that is located north of the barn area when you get there, there will be signs. I highly recommend doing a dry run after they get it set up, but before fair time, you can get in without having to pay. I mean, it depends on your, your local fairgrounds, but you can get in and just kind of walk through where you're gonna be, take a look at the ring, all that good jazz. And that really saved me a lot of anxiety, just getting familiar with the fairgrounds. It tells you which gate to use to enter the fairgrounds. Practice coming in as if you're bringing your animals. It'll make it hauling day a whole lot easier when there's chaos and noise and a billion people and people are mad that you're holding up the line. And you will also get your loading pass. Please fill it out, put it in the windshield. You have a 45 minute time limit. Should be plenty if you've done your dry run and you've got it kind of figured out. There will be a slight delay when you arrive at the fairgrounds to unload because you have to find the superintendent first. You have to tell them that you're there and they'll check off the paperwork and then you go get your animals, walk them in and the vet will examine them and then you proceed to your stalls. If you purchased exhibitor tickets like we just did when we went through the process online, they will also be in your packet. Otherwise, it will give you times that you can go get tickets. On your loading in and out pass, it does say in and out. So make sure that you keep this, if not on your dashboard, then at least at hand so that when you pick your animals up to go home, you also have it. And it's different colors depending on the year and depending on the species that you're loading in and out. It tells you which doors you can access, when it's valid, what the time limit is. Now there was a discrepancy last year because the paperwork said 45 minutes and the actual pass, if you look at it, says 30 minutes. We didn't have any trouble and I don't think we were there very long. And then you put your information on it so that they can contact you in case you've parked there all day and they need to kick you out. On the back of your load in load out pass, it will show you a map of the fairgrounds and it will tell you which gates to use. Again, do your dry run because they were a little hard to find and I probably would have had a lot more anxiety if I had just gone the day of. I also want to walk you through the vet paperwork real quick. It's real simple. In fact, I'll have a video when the vet comes out 
If you have a vet that allows you to take sheep to their office, go ahead and do that. If the vet has to come make a farm visit, have everybody lined up ready to go when he gets there. Vets appreciate that. Uh, your sheep should be halter trained, so it shouldn't be an issue. All you're going to do is walk them out to him, walk them around so he can see their gait, make sure that they're healthy. He'll check their tag number against the paperwork and make sure that it's the correct animal and fill out the certificate of inspection. It should have your scrapey flock number on there. I just noticed that he didn't put that on last year and I should have. It will give the individual identification number, which again, that's the tag number, their registered name, age, sex, breed, and then he'll sign and date it, stamp it. And then when you get to the fairgrounds and your sheep are checked over, the state vet will also stamp it. So keep all of that on hand in your handy dandy little show kit. Stay tuned, next one will be coming up real soon.